Good morning and welcome to our morning worship for Youth Congress 2022. Um, I hope you've all had a wonderful sleep. I don't know if it's morning for you, um, but it's at least morning for us, no matter where you're watching from. Um, it's about 7.30 here, so pretty early. I don't know what kind of morning you had. I know I was watching the World Cup, so I woke up super early. It's kind of the things you have to do when you're in Australia. But we're super keen just to start off our morning with worship. And I want to praise God for all you being here. There's so many people praying over this ministry. And I'd, I'd like to ask you guys as we journey through this week to continue praying over what we're doing here. But for today's morning worship, we have a very special speaker all the way from America by the name of Tassiana. Tassiana, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. How are you today? Doing well. Doing good, good, good. Now, Tassiana, it, it, it's my understanding that you are on Zoom right now. Is that right? That's correct. I'm coming to you via Zoom. Perfect. Could you please tell us, you know, just a bit about yourself? Where are you Zooming from and, and what is it that you do? Sure. So I'm Zooming from um, Berrien Springs, Michigan. And um, I live here and I actually work for the county here in Berrien Springs, Michigan. Um, I'm a social worker that works for um, the public defense attorney's office, so indignant defense. And I mitigate cases and I, I oversee um, the juvenile division um, here in the state, in the county of Michigan, um, Berrien County, where I work with kids who are facing life sentences. So um, anywhere from armed murder, or, I'm sorry, armed robbery to murder, um, those are the people that I get to work with and um, as a social worker. And there's so many times where kids have questions um, about what life looks like, and I get to guide them through what life looks like after you've done something that's considered a life offense. Um, and so often Jesus comes up and so often purpose, I mean, purpose always comes up because once you've done something and they want to put you away for life, life looks a little different. And so being able to walk with kids through one of the toughest points of their life has been one of the most enriching ministries of mine. Wow. Yeah. I'm kind of gobsmacked because that sounds like something that's what, beyond my intelligence level, but also something that has a lot of meaning and purpose. And I'm, I'm sure you find that in, in, you know, in, in what you do. That's, that's so amazing. Um, before I give the floor to you, I'd like to say a, a quick little prayer before you get into your worship. And, and, and from that introduction, I'm keen to hear more um, of your story as we unpack this week. So if you don't mind, I'd like to say a word of prayer over you. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much just for this morning that we can get up and just start off our day with you. I want to thank you so much for Tassiana, Lord, um, for the work she does, Lord, but also for her commitment to you. Um, I pray that she may be placed in your hands today as she shares with us, Lord, and allow us to be refreshed um, and ready to go throughout our day as, as she shares. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to you all. I am so blessed to be coming to you from um, Michigan. Um, it's it's a little cold outside for me. It's raining a little bit, but I'm glad to be able to share the word of God with you this morning. Um, I'm, I'm really, really stoked to be able to invite you to write your story in light of the book of Acts. God calls each and every single one of us to be co-authors in the story, knowing that he is the author. And as we look at Acts and in the four parts of Acts um, specifically, I've looked through the book of Acts and mulled over it um, in my past experience with being a religion theology major. Um, and I always love the book of Acts. The book of Acts is my favorite books because I love Paul. And so in looking at the book of Acts, I want to break it up into four parts. And those four parts that we're going to be looking at during our time together over the next four days are plot, passion, pain, and plenty. So those four parts of Acts that we're going to be breaking Acts down into are going to be plot, passion, pain, and plenty. Say that 10 times fast, and I'm sure you'll be ready to wake up this morning and go for the rest of the day. Plot, plot passion, pain, and plenty. Luke, the writer of Acts, echoes those four sections of Acts in the very last chapter of Acts. 
So when you look at Acts 28, you can actually see echoes from all four sections of Acts in that very last Acts 28 chapter. And during our devotional time, we are going to be looking at each and every single one of um, those four parts. Okay, so that plot, passion, pain, and plenty, and how they are echoed in that very last chapter of Acts 28. As we begin, I want us to look and open our Bibles to Acts chapter 28, looking at the first through fifth, first, first through seventh, seventh, sorry, sixth verse. So Acts chapter 28, verses one to six. I will read it for you. And I pray that you read it with me, that you have a moment to open up your Bible to Acts 28, verses one through six. And then after we read it, I'm going to pray one more time. So Acts chapter 28, verses one through six reads, once safely ashore, when they learned the island was called Malta, the local people showed us extraordinary kindness. They lit a fire and took us all in since it was raining and cold. As Paul gathered a bundle of brushwood and put it on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself onto his hand. When the local people saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this man no doubt is a murderer. Even though he has escaped the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But he, Paul, shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no harm. They expected, the people who were watching, the people of Malta, that he would begin to swell up and suddenly drop dead. And after they waited a long time, they saw nothing unusual happened to him and they changed their minds and said he was a god pray with me our father and our king this morning we awaken to the call that you have for each and every single one of us to allow you to write our story and we hear in your response to us as we surrender to you to write our story, your call to us to be co-authors in this story. Jesus, I pray that as we ponder what our story looks like, each and every single one of us, God, in light of the book of Acts and in the light of, our, of each of our complex histories and stories and the stories we've told ourselves, I pray, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would fall afresh on us. That, Jesus, we just take a moment right now to to breathe in your grace, to breathe in your goodness. Jesus, that we breathe in the mercy that you have over our stories. Jesus, that we be reminded as we think about the writing of our stories and as we think about our lives thus far, Jesus, that you are calling us to be active agents in our story, not passive participants. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak a better word to us this morning and that we would rest in the goodness and in the knowledge that you are a good, good father, that you are Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end, and that you are the God of the middle of our story too. So be with us, we pray. We ask all of this in your precious name, our author and our king, amen. So as we take a look back at Acts 28, we can see that there are two people kind of moving, two people within the plot of this story as we kind of think of plot today. We see the onlookers who are kind of passive, passive recipients of what's happening. And we see Paul, who is the active agent in this story. Let's take a look again at verse three, it says, as Paul gathered a bundle of brushwood and put it on the fire, a vapor came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. And when the people, the local people saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this man, no doubt is a murderer, even though he has escaped the sea, because Paul had just drifted in from sea onto Malta. Justice has not allowed him to live. But he, Paul, he shook off the snake into the fire and suffered no harm. They expected that he'd begin to swell up and suddenly drop dead. And after they waited a long time, nothing happened. 
absolutely nothing happened. Paul is unfazed. And it's so interesting that Paul is unfazed while there are these other people, right? These passive participants, the passive recipients of the story, right? As all of this is happening, they are coming up with what the story, how the story is going to unfold. They're saying, okay, for sure, he's a murderer. For sure, because a snake bit him, he's going to die. And then when nothing happened, they automatically assume that Paul must, Paul must be God. These passive recipients are seeking to understand and actually come out with what's going to happen in the story. They don't trust or ask questions. They only kind of stand in the back and gossip to one another about what they think is about to happen. While Paul is very calmly rushing off the snake, letting it go. Dan Alexander, who writes the book To Be Told, which I encourage every single one of you, if you can, to pick up and read, because it talks a little bit more in depth about writing your story. He says this, if you don't tell your story, your story will tell itself. If we don't tell our stories, our stories will tell us. Whether we revisit the past or not, who we are today is profoundly shaped by the events of our lives and our responses to those events. Our stories impact us either unconsciously or consciously. And it is up to us to decide whether we'll be passive recipients or active agents in the shaping of our story. When we look at the story of Paul, we see that Paul in Acts chapter 28, by the time he gets to the end of the story of Acts, we see that Luke is describing a very different Paul than we see at the beginning of Acts. We see a Paul here in Acts 28 who trusts in the one who he knows will take care of him. We see a Paul who is unfazed because he knows the author of his story. We see a Paul who didn't need to play a, a part in talking to those who are around them, but a Paul who was focused on the purpose that God has given him. And this is a very different Paul as we look at the very beginning, in that very beginning plot section of Acts. In the very beginning of Acts, we see Jesus being resurrected. We see him coming to life and we see him promising the disciples there that there was a power, a Holy Spirit power that was gonna be coming and fall afresh on them and that they needed to wait. They waited and waited till the time of Pentecost. And when the time of Pentecost came, the word of God tells us that there were tongues of fire that fell upon those who were waiting in the upper room for that Holy Spirit, praying and seeking the Lord. And it's so interesting that Luke references that Holy Ghost tongue of fire, because we know that in the Old Testament, whenever we see fire, it's indicative of sacrifice. It's indicative of temple. And so what's happening here at Pentecost is those tongues of fire are saying to, to the disciples that each and every single one of you are a temple unto God. Each and every single one of you are a moving, breathing temple story plot for what God wants to do next here in the, in the Acts of the Apostles. As the story moves on, we see that the, the people of God, the disciples of God are active and they are moving. They are not passive recipients of the gospel. No, they are active agents within the gospel, knowing their purpose within the storyline of Jesus Christ. As the story progresses, we get to Acts 7, where we see Saul, now we know as Paul, enter into the story. And he enters into the story at a very interesting point. He actually enters into the story as what I perceive as a snake. Yeah, I said it. Saul was kind of a snaky guy when we first see him in the very beginning of Acts. I say he's a snaky guy because he was the one who actually condoned the death of the very first martyr, Stephen. I want us to look at that together in Acts 7. Acts 7, verse 55. It says, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens opened and the man, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
They yelled at the top of their of their voices, those who were amongst Stephen, and they covered their ears and together they rushed against him. They dragged him out of the city and they began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of the young man called Saul, called Saul, who we now know as Paul. And while they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And after saying this, he died. And Saul, it says right here, Saul agreed with putting him to death. When we look at the story and the parallel of Acts 28, And we see this active participant, this active agent for the cause of Christ who's unfazed by a snake, unfazed by being attacked versus somebody who in Acts 7 was the attacker. We see the story of Saul named, you know, changed to Paul. We see his story taking a plot twist. We see him in the very beginning of Acts attacking, attacking Stephen, attacking the gospel. And how different of a story do we see at the very end where he's now preaching the gospel, unfazed by any of the attacks that might come his way? When we think about plot, we have only two options. We are either unconsciously a part of the story or we are consciously a part of the story. And what's so powerful as we think of plot is the invitation that Christ has given us as he gave Stephen, the very first martyr, where he was dragged. And he says, in the midst of about to being beaten, he says, look, I see the heavens open up and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. And here we see him saying this, and he is echoing what Christ said in Luke 22, verse 68, where he says, when he's being questioned by the Sanhedrin, he echoes and he says, listen, I see the father and I'm standing at his right side. When we think about our plot, when we think about our story, we only have two places to be. We are either actively participating in the story that Christ has called us to be a part of, or we are passive recipients. There are only two places within the plot of the gospel. There are only two places within the plot of Acts. And Christ wants us to be able to echo when questioned where we sit and where we stand. So I ask you this morning, as you think, and as we think through these moments in Acts, the very beginning to the echo of the very end. Where are you? Are you passive or are you active? Are you unfazed by the snakes that come your way? Or are you the snake in the story attacking others? It's so important for us as believers to ask ourselves these questions, to ponder where we are in the story of Christ. Where are we within the plot of the gospel? When we look at Saul's life up to this point, Saul truly believed he was doing everything right. He worked for the temple. He was a part of those who upheld what was true. And yet he was killing somebody who was in line with the gospel. I think so often of the times where I have been a passive recipient of the gospel and how I haven't been an active agent where I've torn people down with my words, where I've torn others down with my actions. And it's so important as we pause at the threshold of writing our story to surrender our story to the Lord and ask, Jesus, allow me to be an active agent for your kingdom and not a passive recipient of the evil that surrounds me. We live in a world where we are attacked on all sides. And God is asking us as he wants us to write our story, as he asks us to be co-laborers in the work of redemption, who will you be in this plot? Who will you be in this story? How will your life reveal and reflect the glory of my kingdom? Will you be seated at my right hand? Will you stand by my side? Or will you be the snake? Will you be the one to destroy others who are trying 
to push forth the gospel and the goodness of my gospel and grace. This is a really hard devotional thought to start off with as we think about plot, but it's such a necessary one. Because when we see the people of Malta, we see people who are nice and who took Paul in with no problem, but they still had a lot to say about what was going on versus those who are active and willing to share, not to participate, but to be active agents in sharing the gospel. So I ask you this morning, who are you? Where will you stand? And where have you chosen to be in light of the glory and goodness of God's invitation to write your story in light of the book of Acts? Pray with me. Our Father and our King, I ask, oh God, that you would be with us. As we ask ourselves this question this morning, are we active agents or are we passive participants in the story that you've called us to be a part of? Jesus, I pray that your spirit would allow each of us to be active agents within the story. And that as the plot twists come in our life, Jesus, that you would be the one that we trust. We see Paul in chapter 28, unfazed by the plot twist of the snake. But we see him in the very beginning of Acts being the snake. So we thank you for the grace that you allow each of your children to pivot, each of your children to change, each of your children to be able to allow themselves to be under your will and under your way. So Jesus, we ask right now that you'd reveal to us where we are within the plot and that you, Jesus, would allow that plot twist to take place right now, that you would allow the shift within our lives, that you would allow that change within our lives from passive recipients to active agents within the story of the gospel. Be with us. May we surrender in our devotion to you this morning. In your holy and precious name, we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you so much, Tassiana. I love that. I love the way you've explored the narrative of Acts. And in that, you called us to be active in the gospel as we all are, and as kind of is the theme of what we're doing here. So thank you so much and providing such excellent insights into the story, not only of Acts, but of Paul, such an important character in this. Um, thank you so much for joining us today for our morning worship. Um, the day has only just begun, and Tassiana has kind of introduced this day in a very, very excellent way. And so next up, we have the plenary service at 9 a.m. where we will have Eddie Hippolyte share a special message. So we have a lot of good people sharing with us this week. So if you want to be involved and you want to join, Eddie Hippolyte is going to be presenting to us at 9 a.m. So make sure you're here. Um, make sure you enjoy some breakfast as well. Um, maybe if it's not that time for you, enjoy some other form of meal or relaxation and we'll see you back here at 9 a.m.